All right. I know you're going to enjoy this message today. It's so powerful. It's Resurrection Sunday. I think that was great. The kids did a great job. That's so fun. Isn't it great just watching them and everything? And especially this little one that was way over here. She was so serious with everything. and I just loved it. They're so cute. It was a lot of fun. So that scripture that you, that you saw up here, wasn't that powerful how that looked too at the end? Now, that was Jesus ascending into heaven. You saw the angels and the clouds and everything. The scripture tells us that that's how it's going to be when he returns. It's going to be the same way that he's going to, he's going to come back just as he ascended. He's going to descend in the clouds. Isn't that going to be awesome when the skies open up and you see all those amazing, powerful angels all around Jesus Christ and he's, he's coming back? Wow. Wow. That's going to be an, just an amazing time. So, you know, we want to make sure that that's, that's a time that everybody looks forward to. So we have to get people saved through the power of the Holy Spirit that they come to know how good and amazing Jesus is and how much he loves us. He's crazy about us. So the scripture that was up there that was the ending of that video is what we start off with. Revelations 1 and 18. Jesus said, I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and death. That's kind of what I wanted to focus on for the first part of this message. When Jesus was crucified and he, and he died, it said, even, you know, uh, Brian even used this when, when he was uh, saying, when he um, did his message for uh, offering, that he bowed his head and he said, it is finished, and then he gave up his spirit. When Jesus died, his, his spirit left the body. It, it was gone. The same thing that happens to us when we die, our, our spirit, our soul is gone from this body. This is just a temporary earth suit. And what Jesus did did, it was three days. So where'd he go? Well, what did he do for three days until he rose again? Well, the scripture, I gave you a bunch of scriptures here to indicate what happened. He went into hell, into the, into the, the deepest parts of the earth, into Satan's domain, because the gates of hell can't keep him out. And he went and he got the keys to death, hell, and the grave. All, keys mean authority. So he has authority over all life and death, over everything that's happening, and told Satan, his principalities and powers, said, look, boys, there's a new sheriff, and it ain't you, and you guys aren't getting out of here. <laughs> so, you know, they kind of felt this is part of what happened back in Genesis 6. Some of the angels that went against the things of God and were locked, you can read this in Jude, there's some different scriptures here given for that. They were locked in this compartment we call Hades or hell, and, and, they're, and they're, not, they're not getting out. Um, they're, they're thinking that, you know, um, through Satan, Lucifer, that they're going to, well, you know, it's all in God's timing. God controls everything, and so our trust is in God and what he's doing. So let me take you back to what happened 2,000 years ago at the cross. The week before Jesus uh, went and was crucified for us, uh, last week we celebrated Palm Sunday. And that was when Jesus had his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Well, the, the night before, on Saturday night, so Palm Sunday, then we had the night before Saturday night, that's when Jesus arrived into a little town called Bethany. Bethany was a town that was about two miles outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem was really, really full because it was the festival of Passover. That's when the Jews would all gather together and they would celebrate how God brought them out of the bondage of Egypt hundreds and hundreds of years before this. And then they would celebrate that with the sacrificing a Passover lamb. And we'll get into that in just a little bit. When Jesus did what he did at these major events, he did it to correlate what God was doing and God's hand upon everything that's happening. And so just as the Passover lamb was sacrificed hundreds of years before this to deliver the children out of bondage, out of the Egyptian hands, Jesus now was going to go to the cross and he's going to be sacrificed on that cross 
And his blood's going to be shed so we can all be delivered from the bondage. We can be delivered from that stronghold of the enemy. And so we can have victory over the enemy, over all the principalities and powers that are out there. We have authority over them. They don't have authority over us. We have to see that and realize that. They tried to lie to you and convince you all the principalities and powers and the shame, the guilt, the wickedness, the lust, all these nasty spirits want to convince you that you have to do all these things, but you don't have to. You have authority over all the works of the enemy. Jesus gave that to us. And so here he is, and it's, uh, it's Palm Sunday, the night before. He's in Bethany, and Mary, remember Mary and Martha? And the story that Jesus knew them and he, and he hung out with them and Jesus loved them. And then their, their brother, Lazarus, who died. And then they, they said, Jesus, you know, come, he's, before he died, Jesus, come pray for him. Jesus took his time. By the time Jesus gets there, Lazarus died. And they're like, Jesus, it's too late. What, what did you do? And Jesus, no, it's all okay. Just have faith. Lazarus, come forth. And the ground shook. And Lazarus came to life. That's that resurrected power that God has by speaking the word of God. You have authority. When you speak the word of God, his authority is released in his words. And the angels operate on that authority to destroy the works of the enemy. The cross was used to make a public display of Satan that he's no longer in control. So here's other different scriptures that show you that he, Jesus has that authority. And at, at Bethany, what they did, what Mary is also known for, you, you'll know this story, but I don't know if you equated it and realized that it was Mary and Martha and Lazarus. Um, he was in, in that area, and he would come to their home. And this is where Jesus stayed the, the, the days prior to. He would go into Jerusalem, then come back. He would go into Jerusalem for the week leading up to his crucifixion. The one night he went in there and he didn't come back, they arrested him. And then, as you know, the next day they crucified him. But what he did, what Mary did, is Mary took some oil, some very costly spikenard oil, and broke open the flasks and anointed Jesus, his head and his feet, and then they made the comment, what, you know, what, what are they doing, you know, what's she doing here? They should have sold that bottle of oil and, and given the money to the poor. And Jesus is like, no, 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 this, she's supposed to do this. This is for my burial. This will be, be known for all men. It will be written down for all to see. That bottle of oil cost a year's wage. That's a whole lot of money. So today, what would that be, 40 grand? Now, the Jewish custom, when you would die, they would take the body and they would prepare it by rubbing it with oils and lanolins and, and all kinds of herbs and perfumes, and they would wrap it up, almost 100 pounds of spices and oils, and then they would wrap you up and, and you would go into the tomb. So Jesus knew that that type of anointing was coming. So why was Jesus then accepting that anointing at that time? What was the reason for that. A lot of people believe it was because he was being anointed. Anointing is symbolic of being empowered for a task that's going to come. A lot of times as Christians, we say, Lord, I, I, I want the anointing. Please anoint me or, or give me the anointing to do this. What that is, anointing is the power of the Holy Spirit to accomplish a task that God has given us that we can't do on our own. We need the anointing to do that. I pray for the anointing every time I come up here to preach that I, I can say and focus on the things that God wants me to say and focus on and be articulate and have everybody engaged and it's through the power of the Holy Spirit, not through me. I ask the anointing every time I come up here. And God's given us all anointing for what he's called you to do. So that anointing that night was something special because he knew that he was going to ride the next day. He was going to ride on the donkey. They're going to they're gonna cry out, Hosanna, it's going to be glorious. But he knew just a few days later, they're going to be screaming, crucify him, crucify him. He knew that. He knew what was going to happen. And that anointing, what a lot of people believe is, that was because Jesus knew that he was going to go into the 
battle, first of all, the battle to be crucified, I mean, that's, that's quite a, a physical thing that he had to go through and endure. So that was the first part of his battle. But once he said, it is finished, what he had to do in this body was finished. It says, but then he gave up his spirit. That's when his spirit then went and took that authority. He went into another battle with all the hordes of hell. Jesus against all the hordes of hell. Jesus won. <laughs> and he got the keys to death, hell, and the grave. And so he, now, understanding this is symbolic. In the, in the Bible, the oil, again, is so symbolic. It's not like the oil has a power in it in itself. It's what it represents, it, what it symbolizes. We are told to take oil and anoint people and pray for them. It says that when we do that, through faith, we believe that people are going to be healed. It's not that the oil has power in it. It's being obedient to what the Word of God says and that that oil represents the power of the Holy Spirit and the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And that's what's going to bring the healing is our faith being applied according to what Word tells us to do. So what's so cool, I love how God brings prophetic confirmation you know, when you feel like um, you're supposed to do something and you feel you're, you're hearing something from the Holy Spirit and so you write it down and that's what you say, that's the direction that you go in. And for this message today, I knew that um, we were going to be teaching on the anointing and how powerful that that is. And um, in that, we're going to look at the, 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 the doors, the seasons that God gives us to be anointed. We can be anointed any time. But there are times when God has doors and seasons, doors that open up to us that we are to walk through. There are times when the anointing is stronger and greater than other times. And so this time of, of uh, Resurrection Sunday, to understand how powerful the anointing is that was upon Jesus and that sealed him for battle against the principalities and powers is also symbolic of Passover, of the Passover lamb. Now, you, you know what happened when the children were in bondage back in, um, in, in Egypt when they were, um, uh, had to get released from Pharaoh. So Moses had to speak. They went through all the ten plagues, and Moses wouldn't let the children go. And so finally, it had to be where the death angel was called in. And so Moses took instruction from God. God told him, he said, have everybody take a lamb, one lamb per family, sacrifice that lamb, take the blood of the lamb. And again, this is just a type and shadow of Jesus Christ who was going to come and shed his blood for us that we are delivered from the bondages of this world. And so they said, take that oil, get a hyssop branch, which is, you know, a, a leafy branch, dip it in that blood, Put the put the, the blood in the, in the in the basin from the lamb, and that which is symbolic of the oil today that we anoint with. And then take that blood, and you're gonna you're gonna hit the lintel, which is the doorpost and the and the door sides, the door the door piece at the top and the doorpost at the side, lintel doorpost, and hit that with the blood, and hit both of those and mark those. And now this is where the obedience of the children of Israel came into play. God said, now once you put that anointing, the blood, the sealing from the blood of that lamb on that doorpost, you go inside and you shut the door and you don't come out. Because the destroyer is going to pass over and it's going to kill the firstborn. The firstborn male in every family is going to die except for those who are covered under the blood. So they had to be obedient. And when they went in, there, there were horrible cries. It was horrible outside. It was not good at all. It was, it was probably pretty scary with the cries of people crying out and things happening and what was going on. But they knew that they were safe inside as long as they stayed under the blood. Sometimes as Christians... We, we come out from being with the Lord, being under that. we got to be careful that we want to step into the ways of the world where we leave ourselves more vulnerable because we're not staying in Christ under that protection, under the wings, and we put ourselves in dangerous places because we let the desires of the flesh lead us where we're not supposed to be. And that can put us in a dangerous place. we got to repent and get our heart back and get right with the Lord again. And so when they were brought out, so the death angel then the next day after the death angel had killed all the firstborn 
um, the Pharaoh said, you know, let them go. And when they came out, they all had to, when they left their house then, they had to go through the blood of the lamb that was on the doorpost. And so they came out of that covering and the Lord delivered them and brought them out. So now back to the prophetic confirmation. This is what I knew I was going to teach and preach on. And we, we have oil. We've done this before. Um, and I feel this is a, a time to do it again, is understand about how precious the anointing is with this oil. And so I talked to Joe Pierce, our head prayer guy, our, our base man up here, you know, the bald guy with the bare feet who really is rocking and grooving. I love Joe. <laughs> and and I, I said, I got to check our oil because we're going we're gonna to have to have enough little uh, vials of oil to give everybody on Resurrection Sunday so we can walk by faith. We can do what the Bible says. We live the Bible here. We don't just read it and say, that's a nice story. No, we, we want to do the Bible because we believe it. We believe in the Word of God. We believe in releasing the power of the Word of God. And so we checked. We're like, ah, I think we got enough. And uh, we're, we looked pretty good. And then um, last Wednesday night um, at the Biblical Citizenship, uh, we had one of the, the ladies that have been coming here come up to me. And she goes, um, hey, did you hear about um, Dutch Sheets and the program that he did. It, it was really, really powerful, and I, I just felt in my heart I'm supposed to tell you about this, and it's about anointing the doorposts with oil right now, that there's a season, and it's time to do this again right now. And I'm like, whoa. I was like, yeah. I was like all excited, because I'm like, yeah, exactly. I said, I didn't see that, but no, that's what the Holy Spirit's been telling me. And she goes, oh, wow. And I printed off the message, and here's the message for you. And then I read the message, and it's just like the message that I had prepared that I was going to share today. And it just kind of blew me away because it's the same Holy Spirit that's leading us and guiding us. And so with that, this is from that article, so I want to read it really quick that she gave me. Now, I didn't know this prior to preparing this message. What I shared with you, I was already going to share with you about the doorpost, the blood, the anointing that we need to prepare for what's coming. And so now this is from the article verbatim. And what this is, is this is from um, Dutch Sheets. I don't know. He, he's he's a, a, a well-known uh, prophetic voice that's out there, really well balanced. He has a program called Give Him 15, which every single day um, he does some prayer and gives a, a devotional and the word. It's really, really good if you want. It's, it's, it's a good 15 minutes. But I hadn't seen this one recently. And, and so when this was brought to me, I thought, well, yeah, I know Dutch. And so he had a person on his program. So let me read this. This was just um, done uh, on uh, April 6th. If you want to go back and see the program, you can. This all points alert. This is quote from that. This all points alert is to allow us to secure that which belongs to us now. Strike first. Everything that is secured by you will be swept into the outpouring of God. He was saying there's a huge outpouring. There's like a battle, but there's an outpouring of God that's coming. A real strong movement in the church. And that God wants to pour out upon us. This is the instruction of heaven to apply the blood to the doorpost of everything that is precious to you. Strike first by anointing your home with anointing oil, anointing every entry point. Stop in making your faith and your declarations, making your faith and declarations. Strike first by praying together as a family. Cover this time. Anoint your family with oil. Make your faith declarations over them. Stop and prophesy over them. Secure their personal borders and their futures. Call them into a turnaround outpouring. Strike first by asking the Holy Spirit to reveal anything offensive to him that could serve as an invitation to darkness. This is what he's saying. He's saying, look, we're going to prepare for what's coming. Because God, listen, this is, this is God's going to have this tremendous outpouring on, on his church. And we believe this. Satan sees this. He knows this is coming. And so he wants to do a preemptive strike to do everything he can to mess you up so you don't receive everything that God has for you. So he wants to rock your life. He wants to, he wants to kill, steal, or destroy. He wants to try to do something that he can to mess you up so you don't receive all of the things that God has coming for you at this time. 
So what he's saying is we have to anoint all this stuff prior to, so when this outpouring comes, we're going to be ready to receive it, and the enemy can't steal from us what God wants to bring to us in this outpouring, plus protect the things that we already have. So he said, one of the things you need to do in preparing for this is see if there's anything around that could be an invitation to darkness. Parents, look in your children's room. Look and pray and see what's in there. There might be some things in there that aren't good that somehow got in. What if there's a Ouija board in there? Not good. Not good. Look at some of the things that are in there. For a lot of us, I, 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 you might not like this, but Disney is not good. I don't know if you're paying attention to what's going on, but they are um, extremely sexualizing our children. That's their intent, and they even tell you that. I don't know if you've seen any of that, so concern. And I'm not saying you've got to go in there and take everything from Disney out, but you might want to be praying and seeing what you need to do and be led by the Holy Spirit. Are there other doors in there that are allowing darkness to come in? So we have to pray and look for those things. And so... That, you know, that was from this article, and this is exactly what I wanted to do with everybody, so we're going to close with this, with these things, with these scriptures. This is what I want you to do, and this is how to do it. So when we're done, uh, at the end, as soon as I get done sharing how to do this, um, because this is just practical Christianity 101, applying the Word of God. Um, as you, most of you know, who know me for a while, um, I always carry a little bottle of anointing oil in my pocket. I love the blue jeans because they have that, you know how blue jeans got that little pocket right there? Yeah, they made that specifically for your anointing oil. I don't know if you know that. I don't know if the blue jean people know that, but they did. And it works and it goes in there perfect, but these pants don't have one, so they're not very holy. I guess they're more secular pants. I don't know. But, but anyway, so, so with this, when we're done, um, I, I want everybody um, to come up and, and take, this is, we've prayed over this. Um, this is a, a special anointing oil that we get. Uh, just simply because I like the fragrance, I like the blend of it. But again, there's no power in this. The power is in believing what we're doing through obedience to God of what they've done in the Bible. Because when we do the Bible, it is the Word of God. And the authority of what we do is in the Word of God. When God's authority goes out, it smashes the darkness and it gives the angels the right to work against the kingdom of darkness. So that's what's happening when by faith we do something according to the word of God. We're releasing the word of God. The authority of God is in his word. So when we do spiritual things like take communion, praise him, all these different things, it's according to the word of God and it's releasing the power and authority of God to work on our behalf. So with this, this is what we're going to do. This is what you do and this is how it works. You read the Word of God according to, and you can take the same type principle and apply this to all different areas of your life. So what you first do is you, you get your oil, and then you take the Scripture, you read the Scripture that's pertaining to what you want to do, that's pertaining to what needs to come to pass, because we're, we're bringing forth the kingdom of God, releasing God's authority to establish His kingdom and His protection in our life. And it doesn't mean everything's going to go perfect. Stuff happens that we can't understand. That's why they call it faith. If everything went perfect all the time, it, it wouldn't take faith. We have trials and battles, but we know God's going to see us through. So this is how it's going to go. So the first thing is to anoint your, your lentil and your doorpost of your home. So you, you take the scripture that pertains to that. So you take your oil, you go outside your house, and you and your spouse and your kids, or if nobody wants to join you, just you, you can do it on your own. Everybody might look at you at your weird, but maybe they'll rally together with you. Um, you can do it on your own. You got that faith. I can see a lot of prayer warring mamas that, yeah, I don't care, but I'm going to pray because <laughs> they are prayer warring mamas. So you would, you would read this, you would read Exodus 12, 23, because this is the scripture that we're going to apply. It says, for the Lord will pass through and strike the Egyptians, that's all the demonic realm, and when he sees the blood of the lentil on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over and not allow the destroyer to come into your house and strike you. So you're releasing that word of God and that authority in that, that no matter what happens and the things that are coming up in this crazy world, 
your home is protected by the Word of God because you release the authority of God to work on your behalf according to what the Word says. And you also will read Psalms 91, 9 through 10. It says, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. So those are the scriptures. They've got authority. You're going to speak it out loud. Then you take your little oil and you make a decree out of the Word of God. In other words, you pray the Word of God. You, you decree from what the Word says. Now I'm going to apply this. And it says, this would be the prayer for this. You can change it, but this would be one. Now you would say, Lord, we, or I, if you're by yourself, anoint the lentil and the doorpost with this oil, symbolizing the blood of the Lamb. The destroyer cannot enter. You, Lord, are our refuge, our dwelling place. No evil or plague can harm us. This is anointed, covered by the blood in Jesus' name. Amen. When you do that, you have walked by faith and you are putting forth the word of God. You have spoken the words of God by faith and you are allowing the angels and the power and the authority of God to work in your behalf. It's not like this is a secret formula or a certain thing. It's just doing the Bible. It's just doing the Bible by faith. And then it says then too, to anoint each other. So Psalms 91, three through five, it says, surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. So no matter what goes on at night, no matter how crazy it gets outside your house, whatever, you know you've been anointed. You've been covered. Your faith is that God's going to see me through no matter what. So that's the scripture. Here's another scripture. But let all those who rejoice put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy. We do a lot of shouting for joy here, if you haven't noticed, because we're excited. Jesus is worthy to be praised. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Oh, he does. He defends us. That's why I'm shouting. Woohoo! Can't touch this. Can't touch this. <laughs> you under my feet. You, I'll scrush you like a bug. Come on. I'm shouting for joy because you defend them. Let those also who love you be joyful in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous, and he's made all of you righteous. With favor, you will surround him as a shield. God's favor. You got favor with God. He's going to surround you with that favor as a shield. Come on. Like those angels, those powerful angels that you saw. They're active in your life. They're waiting for you to release the word of God by faith. And so the prayer, the decree would be, so we anoint, take this, you know, phew, anoint each other, anoint. If no one's there, anoint you. I've anointed myself before. <laughs> you can do that. You can anoint yourself. Father God, we are under your wings, hidden from the enemy. We have peace at night and all day long. Our trust is in you, Lord. So we shout for joy as your favor surrounds us as a shield. Come on, that's the decree. That's the prayer. And then also to cover our, our possessions, the things that we have. Um, it's not that we worship those, but the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Uh, he wants to... Um, take away all the things that God has given you to really hinder you the best that he can. Matthew 3, or Malachi 3.11, it says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. So God says he's going to rebuke the devourer from trying to take and destroy all your stuff. So, you know, man, might be a, 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 a powerful thing to do to pray God's protection, God's blessing over all your things. Not that you worship those things, but you want them protected. You know, like maybe, you know, and I, and I give you an idea here, maybe over your banking statement for your finances or, or maybe the garage door for all the stuff in the garage or, or whatever, um, how the Lord leads you. And then decree, pray, Lord, our hope, our treasures, our hearts are in your kingdom. The devourer cannot touch what you have given us. We are faithful stewards over your possessions. All we possess will glorify the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the possessions that God has given us, 
It's not that we want to be selfish. We're going to use them to glorify God and, and we'll help and, and bless other people with those things. But we, we want to pray God's protection over that. And then also faith and anoint and call forth your future. God has plans for every one of us. He has plans for every one of us. But the enemy wants to disrupt those plans. The enemy does not want God's plan for your life to come to pass. He's got plans for you and it's good. The enemy wants to screw you up. So he wants to lie to you, he wants to deceive you. And grandparents, are you praying in the call that God has on your grandchildren? Hopefully even on your own adult children. We need to be praying for God's destiny to be fulfilled in, in all of their lives. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14 would be the scripture. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. God wants us to seek him with all of our heart. And he's going to be there. So then the prayer of the decree would be, Father, we know you hear our prayers and our decrees because we seek you with all of our heart. We have peace. And we know that you will fulfill every plan you have for our lives. We have hope knowing your word is true. Amen, amen, amen. Does that give you a good understanding about anointing with oil and how that has to do with being covered by the blood? And this is the time, a season... This is the door is here now.